Good morning, Family Naz. Um, I had pre-recorded this earlier today, and then when I watched it, um, I had made a pretty major mistake. <laughs> and so um, there wasn't a whole lot of time to re-record it, so I hope it's okay that I'm just going live today. Hoping that some of you maybe will even join me uh, chatting this morning. Um, I kind of do better when I'm live anyway, because then I don't worry about making mistakes, or I do make mistakes, but I just kind of flow with it and kind of go on. So anyway, good morning. Uh, it is Thursday, April 16th. 2020 and this is walking through the bible i am jennifer if you don't know me you're well you're welcome just just kidding um if you don't know me i am a member of the church um i've been going there since day one and um, i am the mom of um lots of kids <laughs> and husband to Rand wife to randy see that would have been a mistake i would have stopped for but not when you're live um and today I have the privilege of going through Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 through 30 with you. And I'm looking really forward to that. So, um, but before I have a little sip of coffee, I think that was probably what the problem was earlier is I hadn't had my coffee yet. So go grab your coffee and um, come join me to do this. So Matthew chapter 19, beginning at verse 13. Before we get started, let me go ahead and say a quick prayer to get us on the right track. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for just all the different ways that you bless us. Lord, in this time of uncertainty, you are the one certain. Lord, I thank you for this technology, this way to connect with um, our church family still and with our, our family and others and friends. Lord, I just thank you that you've given us this way to keep in contact with each other and to connect. Lord, I pray that today as I, um, I present what you have told me about this reading, that my words will be your words, not my own. Lord, we ask all in Jesus' name. Amen. Great. Okay. So starting off, I'm going to go ahead and read for you, if I can pull it up here, Matthew 19, beginning at verse 13, the little children in Jesus. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. The rich in the kingdom of God. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad, because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. Okay, so the first thing um, that we're going to talk about is when Jesus um, came to little children or had the little children come to him. So when we read this, and I know that you've probably read the scripture a gazillion times, um, heard it preach. I know even in children's church, when I was little, I've heard it told so many times. I've seen paintings about it. 
um, it is something that is like kind of ingrained in our, our culture that we know this story, but do we know this story? So when I read this, I want to go back and read one part again about this, where it says, um, when he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. And I stop and I think, that doesn't sound like the Jesus I know. When, like, when I see Jesus, especially with children, like, I see a different Jesus. And let me give you a little story to illustrate. Actually, I'm going to give you a secret. There's a little secret that very few people know about me. And that secret is that I am not a kid's person. That's not a secret, actually. It's Everybody knows that about me. I, <laughs> I love my kids. I love my children intensely. But you put me in a room with 30 or 50 or 100 kids, and I'm not loving that moment. Um, I love my friends' kids, like kids that I've, you know, held when they're babies and that I, I've, I've watched grow up and I've had one-on-one -on -one time with and I've built relationships with. Yeah, I love those kids. But you put me in a room with 30 to 50 to 100 of those kids, and that is not my place. That is not my jam at all. Um, but my kids, especially during this, this quarantine, I'm good spending 24 hours a day with my kids. I'm good teaching them and teaching them God's word, teaching them, um, their education. Um, I mean, even yesterday, I love my kids so intensely that yesterday they wanted to play Barbies and I got this rickety old body down on the hard floor and I played Barbies with my girls. Did I want to be on the hard floor? No, but I wanted to be with my girls and do things that they want to do to show them love. And um, just as a side note, I wasn't the only adult that lives in this house that was down on that floor playing Barbies, but that's a whole nother side story. Um, but I did that because I love them. I intensely love my children. And I think there's no one in the world that could love my kids as much as I do but God loves my kids more than I ever can imagine loving them, which is hard to wrap my mind around, but I know it's true. So I can't even imagine Jesus going up to the children and then, you know, the way the story is always kind of portrayed to me, like was, and he laid his hands on them and then he went away. No, that's not Jesus. Like Jesus is ruffling their hair and he's hugging them and he's like calling them by name. And so, yeah, Matthew tells us what happens, but he doesn't give us all the details. The Jesus I know loved them intensely, so much so that when the disciples rebuked the parents, even though Jesus had a tongue going on and it was probably chaos everywhere he went, probably crowds, he stopped. He loved them so much. No, no, no. Bring them here. Bring the little children to me because he loved them, right? So then we go on to the next part, which I thought, I don't know why these are in the same chapter. They're just completely different stories. And then as I'm reading it, God spoke to me. And so, again, this is another story we've read many times. Um, if you're especially, especially if you were raised in the church, it was taught to you in children's church. You read it in Sunday school. But the rich young ruler, the rich, the rich young man coming to Jesus and asking, what can I do to um, be saved? And then the image that I always had as it was taught to me was Jesus saying, well, give up all your things and then you can come and come follow me and then you can be saved and then you'll have eternal life. And then the man walks away and Jesus is like, he had the kingdom right here and he had no idea. But the thing is, God spoke to me this week and he's like, it's the same Jesus, the same Jesus that is over here hugging and ruffling the, the hair on the kids that he wanted to come to him. That same Jesus is the same Jesus that had this conversation with this rich young ruler. When my kids disappoint me, and they do, my kids will disappoint me. When they make bad choices, when they choose to lie instead of just accepting the consequences of something they've done. When they um, choose to break a rule that they know is a rule, but they still choose to break it. They, they do things that disappoint me. And I will um, be obviously upset as a parent and I will discipline. But that doesn't change the intensity of the love that I have for them. Like I still love my kids intensely, even when they make mistakes. 
imagine how it must have felt for Jesus as he stood there with this this child that he loved intensely that he had the same feelings and memories that I do of holding babies and seeing them grow up whether they're mine or my friends and the love that you have for that that child all the way to adulthood he had that same intensity and then the person that he loved turned and walked away you know when my kids make mistakes and make bad choices I can still correct them and I can still pull them back to me, but there'll be a day that I can't. Someday they may choose to walk away and I cannot force them to stay. Um, Some of you who are watching this may already have experienced this and that feeling, imagine that's what Jesus is feeling right now. That same Jesus that intensely loved those children, intensely loves this rich young man and is watching him walk away from the kingdom. As a side note, there are are discussions on whether or not this rich young man was Joseph of Arimathea. I like to think that it was because that helps me to really know that there is always a chance for me. There is always redemption for me, and that that even though if I make a a bad choice now, I then there's hope for me. Um, So, but you can look that up yourself and do some research on that. But I love to believe that that's Joseph of Arimathea. Okay, then let's move on to the the next. Um, There are four encounters that we're reading today. There is the encounter with the children. There is the encounter with with the rich young man. And then then in walks Peter, who's been here for this whole time. And I just love Peter. Can I just say, I love Peter. Like, Peter is my man because Peter says and does some of the dumbest things. <laughs> and he he does things like that you just want to just it makes you just want to smack your head. And it makes me realize that because I do some of the dumbest things and I say things and do things that make you just want to. Uh, and yet there's still hope for me because if Peter can be redeemed, I can be redeemed. Right. So I just love Peter. So then Peter, you know, jumps into the, the scene here and he says, well, Lord, we've given up everything and followed you so uh what will there be what will there be for us you're not getting it either peter like you yes you're doing what jesus told the rich young man to do but you're still looking for the reward you're still looking for okay what's in this for me and i know we all do this like there are things that we do we you know, that we should do just in a worshipful way, but we do like, oh, I paid my tithe. I showed up on Sunday. I, I volunteered in children's church. Well, that won't be me, but you might (laughs) volunteer in children's church. Um, and you check those things off and you, and you, hopefully you're doing them for the right reasons, but there's always a part of us that sometimes are like, what's in it for me? Or when things don't go bad, like I'm doing everything I'm supposed to, where's my reward? Um, so that's what I'm saying. I love Peter because he just speaks what we all all are thinking. And gosh, this same Jesus that intensely loves those little children and intensely loves the rich young ruler, intensely loves Peter. And he, at that moment, he gives Peter what Peter needs, right? He tells Peter, there will be 12 thrones around me and you will sit on one of them and you will all be able to judge the 12 tribes. And But then he ends it with but many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first because jesus knows how hard this is going to be for peter and the other disciples we know in hindsight we're able to read about it we know that it's not going to be an easy road for them from where where peter stands now to sitting on that throne was not an easy journey for peter and god knows this jesus knew this so but he gave peter what he needed right now because he he intensely loves peter even when peter's being a knucklehead and you can read that throughout all the gospels where he's been a knucklehead and it's just it just warms my heart because that makes me feel better about myself i suppose but so we have these three encounters with the little children jesus loved intensely with the rich ruler which jesus loved intensely with Peter, who we know Jesus loved intensely. And then there's the fourth person that encounters Jesus in this. And that's the person reading the scripture. Why 
when I read all of this, do I still struggle to believe that God loves me with the same intensity that he loved the three of them? I'm just being honest here. I'm not trying to like, um, trying to be a woe is me or anything, but if I'm to be honest, I can talk a good game and I can tell you all about God's love and I can tell you that God loves you. I have no problem. I have no problem seeing that God loves you. But when I turn around that God loves me intensely, I struggle with that. Um, and I think there's some people out there that struggle with that as well. It's not just me. Um, and I, I don't struggle with the fact that God loves me. I know God loves me, but I think there's a part of me that feels like I'm on the fringe, right? Anyone else? Anyone else feel that? Like that, that, that we're on the fringe of God's love, but that there are some people that he loves more. It's not true. That is a lie. Satan will tell you. God loves you intensely. He loved you enough to sacrifice his son for you. Jesus put himself on the cross for you and he loves you so much and all he wants is for let let the little children come to me let jen come to me that's all he wants in this time when when we have lost so many of our distractions like let's try really hard to not put distractions back in your life like i'm trying not to but it's hard because you know i'm i'm still i find myself getting distracted by things that need to be done like my kids want to eat three times a day, every day. Like I'm, I, I'm just a chef now. And it can be easy to like only focus on taking care of my family. When all Jesus wants is let the little children come to me. Let Jen come to me. Let Randy come to me. Let Joelle come to me. Let Chloe come to me. Let Phoebe come to me. Let Spencer come to me. That's all, that's all he wants. Right. And he'll take care of everything else. And so if you're struggling with that at all, with feeling as if you are loved, no, no, for the truth that God loves you intensely. He wants to ruffle your hair. He wants you to give up everything and follow him. He wants you to be with him in heaven and, and praise God. He has made the way for that. So I really appreciate you joining me this morning. Um, I hope that you got something out of this and I hope that you're all having a great, great morning. Miss you guys, and I can't wait for um, us to be able to worship together as a family again. And I guess that's it. Love y'all.